what, you know what, just to be safe thing, you did end up saving your ass later. Not my ass, but my mom's. She and I were home alone and I was getting ready to go to her party. I came upstairs and found her with the carbon monoxide detector in pieces on the coffee table. She said it was beeping, and apparently once years ago in our last house one was malfunctioning and giving a false alarm so I guess she just assumed it was happening again. I shrugged it off and continued getting ready. I was about to leave but something was nagging at me. She was insisting it was fine. After some arguing with her I said, no we are calling the fire department. So I did. They came, and the levels of carbon monoxide were so high in the basement they said anyone sleeping down there would be dead already. Our cats were vomiting from the poisoning and we didn't realize. I guess the filter on the furnace was so clogged it was pumping out carbon monoxide. One of the firefighters pulled me aside and said if I hadn't called I likely would have come home to my mom dead in her bed. Not my ass. But I was getting ready for school whilst mum was vomiting in the bathroom. She said it was just a stomach bug and to just go to school but mentioned her arm hurt. Something didn't sit right so I called the ambulance from downstairs. They arrived and took her into the ambulance. She then proceeded to have 3 cardiac arrests and needed defibrillated each time. A double bypass later and she was up and about within a month. Paramedics told me she would have died 5 minutes after I left, if I hadn't called. Had some weird achy symptoms and went to the doctor even though I figured I was probably overreacting. Turns out I had cancer. I had a friend who died of cancer aged 40. Whenever I feel embarrassed or that I'm overreacting about a possible issue, I imagine how much she would yell at me for not getting something checked out for a stupid reason. Please people out there, if you ever feel silly about going to the doctor, remember that Jess would yell at you to get out there and get it looked at, because she doesn't want you to go through what she went through, just because you were embarrassed. She wants you to live. <coughs> Putting only one of my work shoes in the hotel safe, along with my valuables, literally has stopped me in my tracks from forgetting my wallet and passport in a different country. <coughs> Was delivering pizza in a sketchy block of town late at night. Huge apartment complex with multiple buildings. Walking up to the front door I noticed a couple guys wearing dark clothing about 100 feet behind me walking in my direction. Delivery was on the second floor and by the time I reached her door I heard the main door of the apartment complex open and close. She used a cc for the order and tipped in cash. So when I was putting the receipt into my bag, where I kept my cash, I actually pulled the rest of the cash out and stuffed it into my inner jacket pocket just to be safe. Leaving just the change I had that night in the bag, started to head down the stairs back out to my car, and two guys jumped out from behind the stairs, and the one had a gun pointed at me and told me to give them the money. I quickly handed them my bag filled with quarters and they took off towards the back entrance of the apartment complex. I never ran so fast in my life back to my car. I wanted to make sure I was as far away as possible before they realized they robbed me of $3.50 in quarters. $5 breakage insurance on a rental surfboard. Broke that F clean in half in my first 10 minutes. I wonder if it was a ploy by the rental business knowing their boards were liable to break and therefore make more money on customers without insurance. I would dare say the money made from people using and returning the board in the same condition whilst paying the $5 for ease of mind would outweigh the insurance claim when they can just pay $300, or whatever price surfboards are, to replace the one that will inevitably break over time. My friend and his wife were having their first child. They had gotten a big packet of information and paperwork to fill out before the due date to make things easier. There were also brochures for genetic testing and other thing that could be done. And one of the things was about saving the cord blood. My friend said that he looked at the front of the brochure and his wife asked if they should do it. It is not cheap. A couple thousand dollars to save it and a few hundred a year after that. And my friend said yes. Their daughter was born later that year. Three years after her birth, they had a boy, and he was born with an immune disorder, no white cells, and his big sister's cord blood and stem cells were used as a treatment. My dad lost his glasses once. He was going to just use his old prescription but last minute decided to just go to the optometrist anyway, in case something changed. Turns out he had a tear in his retina and was booked for surgery within 24 hours. It was bad enough. They said he probably would have gone blind really soon, had they not caught it when them did. 
lived in Baltimore at the time, pulled up outside my place after getting off a late shift and had to get a backpack out of my trunk before going in. I noticed a group of teenage kids hanging out on the corner and thought nope. Called my roommate to come watch me walk to the door. About 10 minutes later a girl comes running down the street, bleeding, saying she got jumped by the group of kids for no reason. Stay alert out there y'all. Was watching my toddler nephew and he'd found a metal straw somewhere in the house and started playing with it. He was just tapping stuff and waving it around. Did her just read a story on Reddit about a woman who got completely f up by a metal straw when she fell and it impaled her face. So I took the metal one from nephew and gave him a soft, squishy silicone one to play with instead. I'm not exaggerating when I say less than 5 minutes later. He fell like toddlers do and I saw the silicone straw all smashed into his cheek. I had to just sit for a while after that. Lol. Not me, but a co-worker, was trying to separate some railroad ties with a crowbar as part of his yard work for the day and when it popped a nail flew, and embedded itself in one of the lenses of his safety glasses he threw on because he had them for work. He keeps them on his desk as reminder. PPE is not just for the workplace folks. Learned my lesson while using my weed whacker. Piece of debris hit me in the eye took a couple of days for it to feel right again. I dropped my high school girlfriend off, then for some reason I locked the passenger door. Not 10 minutes later I was stopped at a red light and some scummy looking dude tried to open up the door. I have no idea why I locked that door after she got out, I really didn't have a habit of that. No idea what would have happened if that guy got in my truck. Something similar happened to me. I was dropping my friend off at home. He lived in a sketchy neighborhood. I had my driver's side door locked and as soon as he got out I immediately locked the other one. These three girls come running out of the bushes trying to open my car doors. One jumped on my hood and I effing gunned it, she rolled off my car. The other chucked her drink at my driver's side door. I'm terrified to think about what they were going to do to me. Saved the GPS location of my vehicle on Google Maps before exploring a national forest with a road trip buddy. We grabbed some fishing poles and head out towards the nearest water location on our map to hopefully catch a couple fish. Turns out it was a swamp, not a lake, and we got so incredibly turned around it could have ended very badly. We really didn't go that far in from where we parked but somehow ended up on the other side of the swamp without realizing it. Drizzling rain, mosquitoes bear tracks, and the sun started going down before we found the car. Without the GPS coordinates saved, it would have been a cold wet night in the woods at a minimum, and more than likely a search and rescue required situation. I had a female patient coming for I-131 therapy. Patient must be not pregnant and to make sure we do a blood test one day prior to dosing. I checked the results on screen that was negative. I printed it out and put it in the patient file just in case although we went paperless years earlier. After giving her radiation safety instructions and discharging her, she came a couple of days saying that she was late. The doctor inserted another pregnancy blood test and came out positive. The lab technician went to the previous negative blood test and changed IT to positive. Haven't I printed the test it would look like I dosed the patient while pregnant and could get fired. Staff before this incident used to make fun of me being paranoid. After this incident everyone started printing the results. Because a lot of people asked and to answer their questions eater. I reported it to the head of department. He immediately involved the medical physics department and they calculated the dose to the fetus and found out she had to abort because the baby will be severely mutated. So they involved the obigin also. Last thing I knew that a huge investigation was carried out and the patient filed an official complaint. I don't know what happened later. Everything completely changed. Policies and procedures hospitals information system quality department was established risk management department was established etc. That was back in the beginning of 2007. The system was installed in the end of 2006. That was the first time anyone used an electronic system. ETA 2. I wrote the reply and went to sleep and woke up never thinking that this would blow up. Wow. Thank you everyone for upvoting and thank you kind stranger for the award. Thanks for everyone who wished me a happy cake day. You all made my day. Edit 3. That story happened in Mina, Middle East and North Africa. Normally I'm pretty impressionable and cave to peer pressure. 
but this one time when I was younger I was hanging with my friends and a couple of older high school guys I'd only met that day. The girls were all fawning over them, but I could tell they were idiots when they all wanted to go for a drive with the guys. I thought nah, I don't trust these guys and I think it's best I just call my parents and go home. I got a call the next morning from one of the girls who was passenger. One of the high school boys was driving. They'd had a serious crash and one of the girls wasn't wearing her seatbelt and hit her head on the dash and was in a coma for 6 months. She was in intensive care and rehabilitation for years. Still can't believe of all the days I decided not to go with the flow. It probably saved my life. Terribly sad about my friend. We were really close but she never came right and her personality changed. I still wonder how successful she might have been and if we'd still be friends if that hadn't happened to her. Really sad. Similar story here three older kids were going out drinking one night and my girlfriend invited me to go with them. I decided to stay home that night. They went drinking and driving. They crashed around midnight. In the middle of winter. My girlfriend was laying in the snow for 8 plus hours. Until she was found by a bus driver. She was paralyzed from the waist down. The two guys were killed in the crash. Very graphic scene. Very awful deaths. Never, ever drink and drive. Snow chains at the bottom of the mountain. A bunch of cars passed me on a clear road on the way up with several warnings all the way up. I saw a local throwing on chains with no snow in the area. I decided to be safe and put them on 30 minutes later I was in one of the worst snow driving conditions I've ever seen. Whiteout conditions in a snowstorm that eventually resulted in the complete shutdown of the roads. I passed car crash after car crash with just enough traction to feel somewhat comfortable moving 15 miles an hour. Anyone heading to Tahoe needs chains and chains that fit. Don't f around. I don't care if you have a four wheel drive. Driving through Tahoe and Mammoth during snow storms is no joke. Literally sunny with no clouds to blinding white darkness in an hour. Edit. One more thing. If you find yourself near Heavenly and Siri sends you to a snowed over hill that feels too steep. Turn around. Unless you have the right setup you aren't gonna make it. Snow chains or not, you will slide. Just take the hair as gondola if it's that bad. If you don't already have your own gear try another resort. Heavenly is uniquely bad for rentals and beginners in general. Backing up computer files onto an external drive on a regular basis. Power goes out one afternoon. And I was the only one not profusely sweating. Investing in a UPS is also a good idea too as extra security. You get a few mins of battery to safely shut down everything. Also, in emergencies when the power is out for days, a UPS can recharge phones, or power a cable modem and router, for quite a while. Learned CPR and first aid. Had to give CPR to a family friend when she collapsed from a heart attack and thankfully she was brought back after being down for 15 minutes. She only had minor memory problems and mostly just couldn't remember that day. She's still here and kicking years later. One day I was attempting to make karaoke for the first time, a kind of Filipino fried mochi, and after I popped them in the oil, I settled in and watched them carefully. I never wear an apron whilst cooking, but for some reason I figured why not this time, and as soon as I stepped out of range of the fryer, they all exploded. Turns out, karaoke can form an impermeable shell when fried, so pressure built up inside until they popped and sprayed hot oil all over the kitchen. Of course, I was safely away reaching for an apron and was completely dumbfounded. Made sure to punch some holes in all subsequent batches. Of course, once I cleaned the kitchen, I ate them and they were delicious 10 stroke 10 highly recommend. Pro tip, don't let them explode. When I was a student I'd do my own work on my car to save mechanic bills. One day, after changing brake pads, I was driving on the motorway at 100 km per hour the freeway at 60 miles per hour for our American friends, and felt a slight shuddering through the steering wheel. Given you're not supposed to stop on a motorway unless it's a real emergency, I was reluctant to pull over to check if anything was wrong. Though having only worked on the car that morning, I decided I'd check, just to be safe. Turns out I hadn't even finger tightened the wheel nuts, only threaded them about a half turn each. About 15 years ago, I paid the dealership to change the driver's side front wheel bearing on my pickup truck and then drove up the Cockerhalla Highway at 110 km per hour. 
After about an hour I felt a shudder and carefully pulled over expecting a flat. None of the wheel nuts were tight and three of the six were only held on by a couple threads. The bolt holes in the aluminum wheel were now oval shaped. Just so everyone knows, the Coquihalla Highway is a very fast road. Speed limit is 110 but the average speed is 140 or so, with often cliffs on one side and lots of winding turns. I cannot think of a worse road to lose a wheel on. <coughs> Grabbed a helmet when riding a bike down a steep hill as a kid. Normally didn't be it. I ended up falling at top speed and breaking my helmet and chipping three teeth. Could have been my head that was broken. Oh, I did the same except instead of eating dirt, there was a car coming up the bottom of the hill around a blind curve. I was 11, unsure whether or not my family is better off with me having made that choice, given a bunch of cascading effects, but I guess being alive is kinda nice. Wear your helmets. <coughs> Had my boat trailer bearings repacked by the boat repair shop dealer before I went on a trip, that I had to tow it for 400 plus miles. I usually repack the bearings myself, but figured I'd have the pros do it, since I had a long haul ahead of me. The day before I left I decided to double check that the bearing case was full of grease. Without it they would overheat, and I'd be f royally and stranded with a high risk of a wheel actually coming off the trailer. If I didn't notice it in transit, there was no grease at all in the bearing case on any of the four wheels. I would have been lucky to make it 20 miles before something serious happened. Also this has been a habit for decades. Pat my pocket to make sure my keys are in my pocket before. Closing the locked house door. My car door. Etc. <coughs> my stomach had some issues and my doctor sent me for a colonoscopy just to get things checked out. They found one polyp. No big deal. Not related to the current problem. And told me to come back in 5 years just in case. I put a google reminder and forgot about it. 5 years later. I went for the colonoscopy and they found a lot more and said I would have ended up with cancer in 5-20 years for sure, had I not gone. Instead, they removed all polyps and now I'm regularly going to colonoscopies due to having a syndrome they identified. I'm far away from the age where you normally get a colonoscopy so I would definitely have got cancer. When you are eligible or if it is recommended, get a colonoscopy. I didn't wanna wear a helmet while riding my Razor scooter, because I couldn't see how I could possibly fall and hit my head. Anyway I fell and hit my head hard. Luckily I had decided to wear a helmet just in case. My freshman roommate and I had a massive falling out during our first semester. By Thanksgiving I'd already requested a room change, but had to wait until holiday break because there were no free rooms available. While we waiting for the room change we avoided each other and I generally spent as little time in the room as possible, which was usually fine. The last day of class before Thanksgiving break rolls around and I was chilling in a friend's room waiting for a ride home for the week. I texted my roommate to let me know when she was gone so I could come and grab my stuff and after she replied k I didn't think much of it. Out of nowhere a thought struck me, and I sat bolt upright and shouted. The vodka I realized I had a half a handle of vodka stashed in my mini fridge. I jumped through hoops to get it from my older sister when we'd first moved in. Because my roommate had desperately wanted to throw a party in our room. But now that we were on the outs I knew this bitch would point it out to her mom when she got picked up in an attempt to get my disciplined. My friend thought I was insane. But I convinced her in a near panic that we had to do something. We called a mutual friend and cashed in a favor. We told him he needed to call my roommate and demand she get lunch with him to get her out of the room. I waited just out of sight in the dorm courtyard and watched her. And the guy walk into the dining hall then dead sprinted to our room. The handle was sitting out on my desk. I immediately threw it in a garbage bag and buried it in my laundry, then flew out of that room like a bat out of hell. Hours later I went to the room to pack up and found that she'd absolutely trashed the room. She had pulled apart my desk, my bed and my closet but somehow missed my hamper. In a rage she ripped apart my name tag. In the end I got away with my vodka and she got written up from trashing my shit. My instincts did not lead me astray that day. On a road trip with our, my siblings and I, dad in Latin America, he lived there and we were visiting, on a highway at night, with clouds, no moon and no lights. This was a new highway that nobody likes taking now, as criminals often leave glass or spikes to puncture tires and rob you, or worse. We were driving, 
and this guy was pulled over and waving for help. My dad stopped behind and the guy was scared and asked if we could light up his car while he changed a flat tire. He was terrified of being out where alone and rightfully so. Dad goes to get out to help and my sister grabbed him and said she didn't think this felt right. Dad assured us it was fine and almost got out, but sister grabbed him again. Right then a car flew by the door right where he would have been four guys jump out. One grabs the man puts a gun to his head and the others sprint to our car. There was a brief chase down the highway, but luckily their old Corolla didn't keep up with our jeep, and they gave up after 2-3 minutes of driving 170 km per hour. My sister saved my dad's life, and probably ours, by making him stay in the car that extra few seconds. Edit. The guy with a gun to his head lived and was okay given everything. After the chase, we had to turn around and continue on the way we were originally going, as there were no other routes to get back home. Unless we backtracked 6 hours, after we passed the vehicle of the man, we saw he wasn't there anymore and we thought the worst. Luckily we ended up passing 4 National Guard vehicles about 2 kilometers later and saw that the man was with them talking to them. To answer, I've never known if the guy was in on it. The timing has always seemed off to me, however the look of fear in his face was so genuine when the guys jumped out that I can remember it perfectly 15 years later. Edit 2. The country in question is Venezuela. There are times when it's crucial for me to take something with me when I leave home the next day. I figure that of course I'll remember, because it's so crucial. But just to be safe, I will put the thing on top of my car keys. And yes, that's bailed me out a couple of times. I once removed a thing I had to remember from my wallet to get my wallet and go. I am not a smart man was on a side-by-side -side vehicle mudding on some property, a friend and I, were visiting. Mid-ride, I turn to my friend and say hey, you should probably buckle your seatbelt, just in case. Not one minute later did he lose control and slide front first into a tree going about as fast as this thing could go, given the conditions. Both of us were okay but the side-by-side -side was completely ruined. He looked at me right after and his eyes were as big as dinner plates. Leaving a spare set of keys at the pub that I live above. Went out on St. Patrick's Day and had my coat stolen. I keep my keys in my coat. At 3 in the morning, I had genuinely no idea how I would have been able to get home otherwise. Definitely not some big life saving moment or anything but it was a relief. Lol. I keep a spare car key at work. While I have never needed it at the end of my shift, there have been a couple of times that I have been in town. I live an hour outside for something else, and managed to lock my keys in. It was the difference between a 10 minute cab ride, or a city bus, and a 2 hour cab ride. I lock my doors habitually, walk through a door, reach behind me, twist the lock. It's the way I was raised, and I honestly don't even think about it. I've actually gotten myself into trouble absent-mindedly locking other people's doors. House, offices, shops. I'm a menace. This one night. I'm sitting and reading pretty late, and I suddenly think, I need to check my front door to make sure it's locked. Lo and behold, it's actually unlocked. Shocked me a bit, but I locked the door and the deadbolt and slid the chain for good measure. Then go get myself a glass of water. As I'm walking with my glass of water from the kitchen back past my front door, I catch a movement out of the corner of my eye. I turn to the door and watch the doorknob slowly try to turn left and right. The micro movements that a locked doorknob can be forced when twisted. I put on as deep of a voice as I can and forcefully stage project. I have a gun, and I'm calling the cops. The doorknob stopped turning. I slept in a closet that night, just in case. Edit. Thank you for the updates and especially the person who gave me the gold. I tried to message you privately, but I couldn't. So, thank you. <laughs> Worked alone in a gambling video poker place. Closing. Strange guy came in and started making small talk with me. I was expected to be kind and friendly to everybody who came in so I was doing that. I decided to send a message to my boyfriend and a friend. And then something in me told me to take a picture of the guy as he moved closer to the counter I was behind. I snuck one real quick and sent it to said friend since she was awake. She called me immediately as she drove the 20 minutes to my job. An hour before I got off. I'll add, I didn't drive so I had no vehicle in the now abandoned parking lot. The only car being his, which was conveniently backed in, right next to front door. 
Two days later there was a missing persons report released, of someone who was a very familiar build and features that I have, and suspected trafficking in the area. She went missing later that same night. He left after my friend showed up. I've never had such an uneasy feeling in my life and I truly think sending those messages are what saved my life. He was waiting for me to get off work at 1am. Our hours were right on the front door. Filling up my ridiculously large 2.5 liter water bottle yesterday. A pipe burst in my building last night. And we still don't have running water 20 hours later. But I still have my bottle. Make sure you have an emergency supply of water in your house. Was in a dune buggy with a roll cage and just driving it around the neighborhood. Put on a motocross helmet just to be safe. When we wrecked, the side of the helmet that hit the road was completely white, as all the paint had been scrapped off. Back when I used to smoke wee, my friend and I went to pick up a particularly large bag of it. We took two cars with the idea we'll tailgate him in case any cops in our town do a routine pullover. The corner of our street had a small shop and wouldn't you know who was parked there, ready to pull over the next car. Couldn't believe our luck when it worked. They pulled out behind us, sirens went on, and I pulled over and my friend just continued on home with the goods. I got a routine alcohol test and sent on my way. I went to the doctor because I couldn't get rid of a cough. Turned out I had pneumonia. A pretty bad case of it. Same thing happened to me. Had a cough for 3 months. Didn't think much of it until I was getting sharp back and chest pains from just breathing. I guess from coughing so much. Went to the doctors. They rode me straight to the hospital in an ambulance. They told me if I would've waited any longer I probably would've been dead. You know what, I'm gonna look to see if all the vehicles have come to a stop, just to be safe. I told myself this, right before I enter an intersection in my car. It saved my life because there was a vehicle doing around 100 km per hour, 60 miles per hour, that would have tore my car in half and killed me. In college I was in Ra. A girl wanted to hook up with me and I was going to but I ended up drinking and watching Lord of the Rings. Two towers, with some friends instead of their dorm. Few days later I was fired from Ra job for SH a student. I didn't in any way shape or form SH anyone and the date time given was when I was in middle of movie. I had 13 people to vouch for me. Never found out this person who reported me but I'm fairly certain we can all guess who it was. Because after I and my friends, all literally said, I was watching movie, which I was and also I slept over at their dorm. Nothing wrong with a 12 dude sleepover. Haha, <laughs> I was rehired and case dismissed. Had my penis won the decision to hook up or not, I'd probably be in hot shit. I won subcultured a master culture, which was used in a very important research study. We were specifically told not to do that, because of patent liabilities. But still I had a gut feeling that we were going to need another plate cultured. And lo and behold, a student accidentally dropped the plate in a lab and it shattered. Saved us a 6 months of time and penalties. Might sound ridiculous. But many years ago when I did my mandatory community service, was a thing in Germany as a counterpart to mandatory military service, there was a particular day in a pretty harsh winter. I usually went to work with my bike, as the streets were cleared of snow and ice anyway. At this day, I didn't take my helmet off, because when I arrived at the place I worked I immediately started to shovel snow and didn't even walk inside first. My workplace was a huge and old 4 story hostel in the woods. The roof was packed with snow and there were massive icicles hanging from the gutters. When a co-worker asked me why I decided to look like an idiot with my helmet on, I jokingly replied it was for serious security reasons. A few moments later an icicle block fell down and hit me on the head and the shoulders. The impact was so brutal that it made me fall down on my knees. Shoulders were bruised but my head was fine. I really don't know what could have happened if I didn't wear my stupid bicycle helmet for fun that morning. Serious injury for sure. During a hurricane, I realized the street was flooding so I figured I should move my car farther up the driveway. On my way out, I had the sudden urge to poop so just to be safe, I stopped by the bathroom first maybe 30 seconds later, boom. Neighbor's tree fell directly on my car, crushing it. Super embarrassing story but eff it, I'll share with internet strangers. My 10 month old recently got norovirus. 
For those who don't know, norovirus is a highly contagious stomach virus that comes with vomiting and diarrhea for days. He got sick and gave it to me, so as you can imagine, it was a rough time. He ended up having to go to the ER twice, and the second time I knew I was gonna have to stay overnight so I brought a change of clothes, just in case. Welp, halfway through the night, I thought I just had to fart badly and ended up shitting my pants. But I had brought that extra pair of underwear and pants. So I had to casually and nonchalantly call the nurse into the room, ask her if she minded sitting with my baby so I could go pee, walk all the way to the one available restroom and wait for it to open up all, while trying not to do the poop waddle and let it be known I had destroyed my pants. Luckily I had packed the underwear and a lot of baby wipes so I was able to clean myself up in the bathroom. I threw my underwear and pants right into the trash. My just to be safe quite literally saved my ass. When I bought a used car while traveling around my dad pressured me into buying a towing insurance. I thought it was a waste of money for $60. I ended up getting towed 6 times in 2 months. When my car broke down, I saved about $2000 with having that insurance. If there's one thing I always trust my parents on it's mundane ways to ensure you don't go insane in your adult life. They've got 20 plus years experience on us, might as well hear them out. Not me but my dad. Bought into a 500k life insurance policy at 42 years old. Many people made fun of him, called him crazy, etc. And he said exactly that. Just to be safe. He had a seizure at 43 years old. July 2007. Brain cancer. Died June 2008 at 44. Policy was paid into. For less than 2 years. I've carried life insurance since I was 21. Too much cancer in my family and my dad died extremely young. I was at a sleepover as a kid. I was a little worried because my mom had been oddly tired. Earlier that day, I went home early because I was worried. By the end of the night I, 14 at the time, had to call an ambulance for my mom, as she was having problems with her heart and I was the only one there with her. She was incapable of forming coherent sentences and would probably not have gotten the help she needed if I wasn't there. So, good thing I was. <coughs> had bad feelings about a pregnancy the entire time. Doctors dismissed me through the entire pregnancy, approaching my due date with a plan to deliver at a birth center. My midwife sent me for a just to be safe ultrasound. She didn't want me so anxious in labor. She wanted to set my mind at ease. That ultrasound revealed severe malformations in my baby's brain that would have trapped her in her suffering body for up to a few years. Because laws are absolutely nonsensical when beginning of life and end of life care collide, we could not have put her into palliative care. She would not have survived more than a few days without medical interventions. But they kept telling me it was not a fatal diagnosis, then going on to list a dozen horrible ways it would absolutely kill her, so she would have gotten trapped in a cycle of painful interventions for her painful problems that would slow down her death, but never make her better. I understand why parents choose to extend their baby's life as long as possible, even when it is hard, and I honor that path. But I value peace very very much and my own instincts were clear for my own baby. I ended up traveling 2000 miles to have an abortion in my 36th week of pregnancy, which was very very sad and hard, but humane and merciful, compared to my babies and my alternatives. I hate that that happened. I resent that I was ignored and dismissed along the way, but I am deeply grateful that I still had any choice at all in how my baby died took a manual copy of the folder that the script was supposed to back up and then update. Turns out the script was broken and didn't copy the folder, but just as a file, left of the trailing at the end. Manual copy meant we could replace it and try again with the fixed script instead of finding the original somewhere else. I was studying computer science in the UK, I'm from Germany, and was supposed to be there for 4 years total to get my master's degree. 2017 to 2021 was the plan. Early 2020, shortly before I'm due to get my BSE, news of COVID start going around. I'm not normally the type to give much attention to these types of things, and during previous outbreaks of bird flu or swine flu, when every one of my family members was going insane, I always kept a cool head and never let it bother me, but this time around my gut told me to GTFO and go back home before it's too late. 
Not too long after they shut down travel and all teaching, including my final exams, went 100% online anyway, so I ended up finishing my BSc completely remotely from Germany and got a web dev job instead of doing that one extra year to get my masters. I've since moved on from that company and went on to become head of technology at my new company, so yeah things are going well. Hurricane in Florida last year knocked out our power for 5-ish days. We had been talking about gearing ourselves up, in case of an emergency, and were planning to get a gas generator and solar panels and whatnot, but were planning to slowly build up our emergency backup power, for a few years. A month before the store, we started with a backup battery for the fridges and goddammit saved all our food. We had to super ration the power output. And I have a family member with medical devices that was a problem we couldn't deal with fully. Not vital life sustaining stuff but an air mattress bed and formula pump for feeding. But still would have been lost without it. Still planning to gear ourselves up slowly. But we have a gas generator now to be safe. I haven't needed my inhaler in years. However on a hunch. I took it to a 3 day trip with my then boyfriend. Which was 3 hours away from home. And I went for all intents and purposes, alone. Heavy cigarette smoke at the party, and lots of people were drunk and we weren't near a hospital or stuff like that. As much as I tried to avoid it, a puff of smoke blew directly into my face. The kind that you can't just shake off, and that will send you to the ER if you don't have an inhaler. I whipped it out and used it, saved my ass in the night. I carry with me as a precaution, 